This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we're gonna go over four ways to use your petal tips to decorate a cake. We're using our petal tips in a non-traditional way. We're gonna use them to make ruffles instead of petals. So if you're new to decorating or haven't used your petal tips a lot and are a little unsure about getting there yet with things like piped flowers, this is some really great practice. First, we're gonna do a ruffle top that's a concentric circle that's gonna give you the look of one big, beautiful flower. And then we'll do a ruffle border. So great way to cover up that bottom of the cake if it's still looking a little less than perfect. And then we're gonna do a wave on the sides. It's a nice vertical pattern that has some order and structure to it while also having a little softness. And it's a great way to cover up any oopsies on the sides you might have. And finally, we're gonna finish with mini ruffle flowers. We're gonna use our flower nail to make some cute little mini ruffle flowers. And it's gonna be a great practice and a great stepping stone towards doing more advanced piping on your flower nail. So the first style we're gonna talk about is a nice ruffle top. So this one is a great way to cover up the top of your cake. So if maybe it's still a little lumpy, uneven, not quite level, whatever, this is a great way to cover up any of these flaws because it's gonna give you an all over effect. That's gonna give you a beautiful, big, floral, ruffly flower on there. So it's gonna give it just a nice bit of texture. So it's a lovely little detail to finish a cake for a bunch of different occasions. We're gonna use a 104 tip, but really you could use any petal tip. If you use a bigger one, like a 125, it's gonna give you bigger, more dramatic ruffles. Smaller petal tip will give you smaller, tinier, petite ruffles. And we're gonna use a nice, simple technique. We're gonna take that 104 tip and we're gonna have the back edge along the surface of the cake. So the big fat end is just gonna to touch the surface. And then the top edge, that skinny part, we're just gonna gently rock it up and down. And as we spin our turntable, we're gonna get a nice ruffle. And then we're just gonna take it and work in concentric circles. And that's gonna make that beautiful ruffly floral pattern for us that's gonna cover the top of our cake. So now that we've talked a little bit about what we're gonna do, we're just gonna practice the motion on our paper a bit. So I've got my 104 tip. Right? We've got the fat end, that's the end that's gonna touch the surface, and the skinny end, we're just gonna rock up and down. So I'm just gonna lay it here on the surface of my tray, and I've got that fat end touching. And as I move, I'm just going to rock a little bit. So you can see it's just a nice gentle motion where I'm just kind of taking my hand and twisting up and down, up and down. And that's gonna allow me to keep contact with the surface with the back end, while gently changing the orientation of the tip in relation to the surface of my cake, right? So it's just a nice gentle motion. We're not really moving our hand up and down, just a nice little rock back and forth with our wrist, and that's all we're gonna do. So we're gonna pull out our cake and practice this on the top of our cake. So we're gonna start working on the ruffle top on our cake, and you can see we have a nice smooth iced cake. It's nice and firm, it's been in the fridge. It's gonna be easy to work on top of. I'm gonna grab my bag, and I'm gonna just hold it, right, in a position that's natural for you. So pick a spot on the cake because you're really just gonna stay still and we're just gonna rock slowly as we turn our turntable. You wanna start in about a tip's width and just gently rock as you go around, right? So just go at whatever rate, whatever speed works for you, whatever gives you nice, beautiful ruffles. You can see I'm just rocking that while I'm maintaining contact with the back edge of that tip. And that's gonna give me a beautiful ruffle. And I can just keep going all the way around. And when I meet up, you can just finish the first one and then start a second one further in, or you can just keep going. Just slide your tip back a little bit and start your next row. So instead of where I was before, move back just a tiny bit and start another row of ruffles. And we're just gonna keep going until we get a nice, beautiful pattern that fully covers the top of our cake. And that means if you have any blemishes, like maybe you picked up some crumbs or it's a little uneven or there's just something you don't love about it, it's an easy way to cover up the top of your cake 
make a beautiful textured pattern. It's great for a variety of holidays and it's easy to accomplish and quick. You'll see doing this whole thing on camera, it's really only going to take just a couple of quick minutes. If you need to pause, don't worry. You can just start up again. Those ruffles mean that no one's going to see those little blips and breaks in those lines and you can just keep piping those great concentric circles. I'm going to fill up my bag and finish the center. I've got more frosting loaded up so you can see I'm just going to keep going and just keep ruffling in there. If you need to, just pull the top end of the tip a little more towards being upright as you get towards the center and that'll help those little ruffles nest in there and then we're just going to keep going until we get a beautiful finish on our cake all with that same motion and you can see you get a beautiful little ruffled top it's got nice floral texture to it and it wonderfully finishes our cake the ruffle border so this is the next design we're going to do with this petal tip and it's similar to the one before in terms of the technique that we're going to use and the tip and it's just a great way to cover up that bottom edge or even the top edge if you want. You can just do a single circle around the top and stop there. So we're going to take that same ruffle motion, same 104 tip. The back end of the tip is just going to be right against right that bottom edge of our cake and the cake board. And then we're just going to do that same little wiggle up and down that we did before with that outside edge. So just taking our back and just rocking gently, right? So we're really keeping our hand in place. We're not moving up and down. That would create a zigzag. We're just rocking our hand with the bag in it. And that'll allow that fat end to keep contact with the cake and the board and give us that nice ruffly edge along there. So things that you can do, if you rock your hand faster and give it more volume, right? A bigger rock, you're gonna get bigger, more dramatic, closer together ruffles. And if you go slower and softer, so just a little gentle one, you'll get a nice subtle little ruffle there. So you can kind of even change the look of these as well. You can do a variety of things. We're just gonna do a single one, but you can even double these up. So do two layers of ruffles, or you can do things like put a little pearl border on top of that back edge of the ruffle to just give it a little extra finish. And I love that this gives your cake a nice almost tutu-like feel. It kind of draws the eye down to the bottom. And it's a really great one if you wanna do something like an arrangement of fresh flowers or piped buttercream flowers on the top of your cake. Cause it just gives it a little anchor and a little softness down there at the bottom. So now that we've talked about it a little bit, let's just practice our ruffle again, right? So just make sure that back edge is gonna make contact with the surface of the cake board and we're also gonna drag it along the cake and we're just gonna rock. And it doesn't matter which way you hold the bag because we're doing this motion and it's kind of universal. You can see you can hold it either direction and achieve the same effect. We're just going opposite ways, right? The ruffle's going out in different directions based on which way you spin it. So we're gonna pull our cake out and practice this along that bottom edge. So let's practice our ruffle border. We've got our cake ready and we've got our bag ready to go. It's our 104 tip. We're gonna take that back edge and just squish it down into that corner, right? So it fits perfectly in there. It's making contact with not only my cake, but also my cake board. And we're just gonna take it and rock our hands. So you can see we get beautiful ruffles. And this is one of those ones you can just use your other hand to so just nicely, just give your turntable a little nudge anytime you need to and just work. And you can just leave your hand in that same position and just make these great little ruffles. And this is a great one if you feel like the bottom edge of your cake leaves a little to be desired and you want to cover that up while adding a little bit of interest and detail. And don't be afraid to stop, give your bag a twist and reposition. It's really easy to connect with and cover up these lines. You just start piping again and let it overlap. And when you get back to the beginning, just be mindful of that, right? When you start to see it and come into view and just 
lay that last ruffle over the first one and you can see you get a beautiful little finish down there at the bottom of the cake. It's really gonna help bring the eye down, it'll cover up any blemishes, and it gives you a nice clear top up there to add any decorations, do some writing, put on a cake topper, add some flowers, whether they be fresh, gum paste, or buttercream. So our next cake, we're gonna do some wavy ruffles on the sides and they're gonna be vertical. So unlike a lot of the stuff that we've done where we've been flat on the top or against the surface of the board, this one, we're gonna travel up the side of our cake. And the first thing we're gonna do is divide it into sections. You can make as many sections as you want, or you can even skip that and just go full solid the way we did over the top all over the sides. But this way, it's gonna take a little less buttercream because we're just gonna do some great little wavy lines to give it the look of some little vertical ruffles. So I'm gonna take it, divide that cake into equal portions, and I'm just gonna use my bench scraper to mark some nice vertical lines for me. It's an easy way to do it because you can just use the right angle of that bench scraper just to press a little line quickly in there. And then we're gonna use those lines as a guide, right? Rather than just kind of eyeballing it and freehanding it, we're gonna use it as a guide for the back end of that tip. And we're gonna press the tip against the surface of the side of our cake. And then we're just gonna wave that little skinny end as we go up. So instead of holding the back to the side and rocking this way, we're gonna hold it vertically and just rock gently in and out towards the cake, towards and away, towards and away. So same motion, we're just changing the orientation of our arm a little bit for this. So we're gonna start at the bottom, use that line as a guide and ruffle our way all the way to the top. And then we're just gonna go around and anywhere we've marked a line, we're gonna use that as that starting point and just follow it all the way up the side of the cake. And it's gonna give us a quick, cute, pattern that's going to have a little bit of a geometric feel to it, right? Because we have those evenly spaced lines to it, but also has a little softness and a little ruffle. And I always think it looks a little bit like fabric-y, kind of, I don't know, like roughly little curtains or something of that nature. And it's a great kind of vintage look. It's a, it gives me some of those kind of shabby chic vibes to it. So it has just a little bit of organization and order to it and just a little bit of softness. And it's a cute one for covering up the sides of your cake. So if your sides aren't perfect yet and you need to cover up a few blemishes, this can be a great way to do it. That's also really easy. Now that we've talked about it, we're just gonna practice holding a little bit differently. So I'm gonna hold my bag so that we're pulling our line this way and just give it a little practice on your tray first. And when you feel comfortable, pull your cake out and get started. So the first thing we did for this is we marked the top edge of our cake with just little tick marks, getting kind of even, even spaces. And then I used my bench scraper just to press lightly into the surface. And since my cake is nice and firm, it just gives me a nice little line there to follow. And you can see I've done that all the way around my cake. And they're pretty evenly spaced. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. We just wanna make a really nice pattern, right? So we're gonna take our tip, nice little 104 tip. We've got our fat end. We're gonna start here at the bottom and that fat end is going to be against the surface and we're just going to ruffle up the sides. So you can see it gives us a nice little straight line that little line that we made on the surface gives us a nice guide and we can just finish it right there on the top. And then I'm just gonna move over to my next little indent and do the same thing, right? So bigger motion with your hand gives you bigger waves, smaller will give you smaller and just make sure you get a nice little finish there on the top. And this always gives me the feeling like roughly little pinstripes. I like to combo it with other things like little dots, tick marks, and other little cute piping just to give it a cute little kind of like sewing project feel. I feel like this is a nice little design just for kind of like afternoon tea, a cute little birthday. Gives you nice open space at the top if you wanna do any writing put any flowers on it. And if you do them closer together, you'll cover more area. And if you don't like the sides of your cake or they're looking a little funny, you can do them super close together so you can basically cover it up entirely if you don't like the way things are going. And it's a great way to add kind of order 
and give things a nice kind of structured vertical feel. You can see it's a really quick way to put some finishing detail on the sides of your cakes. And it's also a really one, great one for practicing piping on the sides of your cake. As you can see, it's really easy. We're basically just gliding the tip along the side. It's okay to make contact, right? So you don't have to worry about doing things like piped lines or writing or anything like that on those sides, but it's a great way to get comfortable with working on the sides of your cake. And you can see we get a nice little ruffled stripe design. It gives me a very fabric-y, fun feel. That's kind of a perfect little finish that leaves us a great open area on the top for some extra details. So for this one, we're going to do something a little different. We're actually going to start using our flower nail and we've been making these ruffles and now we're going to make them smaller. So we're going to do almost what we did on our first cake with that ruffle flower top and we're going to make small flowers on our flower nail. So this is a great way to start working with your flower nail because that ruffle motion is really easy to get a hang of. It's really easy to feel like you've kind of mastered it and you're comfortable with it. So then the really only thing you have to focus about is spinning that nail. And it's a great step towards making piped flowers. If you're not quite there yet and it makes you a little nervous or a little uncomfortable or it's a few too many things to focus on. If you can get a hang of ruffles, then you can make these cute little ruffle flowers and it's a nice way to get yourself into and start easing into making piped flowers. We can use these to cover the top of our cake. You can make a bunch, cover the top and sides, or just the sides. So it's a great way to cover up big areas really quickly. We're gonna pipe those little ruffle flowers on our nail. We're gonna put them on a tray, and then we're gonna chill them. So that way they'll be really easy to handle and place on our cake, whether we wanna put them on the tops, the sides, or both. And I'm gonna just do the top. So we're gonna use that same ruffle motion and just keep that bag kind of in place, do that gentle rocking motion with our hand while we spin our nail, make a few quick concentric circles to make pretty little ruffly kind of in floral inspired little um, flowers. So they're just going to be kind of little fantasy flowers. They're going to look a little floral, but not too much and be a little indistinct. And we're just going to pipe that quick concentric circle. And then we're going to take them, move them over to our tray and store them. So now that we've talked about it, we'll practice these on our nail, make a whole bunch, and then we'll place them on our cake. So I've got my flower nail out. I'm just going to give it a tiny bit of buttercream grab a little square of parchment paper. I want to pipe on parchment so that it's easy to transfer them to my tray and later to my cake, right? And I'm just going to set myself up. I'm going to have that fat end of my tip towards the center of my nail. The skinny end is out. I'm going to use the same rocking motion and I'm just going to spin as I go. That's going to make my little circle of ruffles. And as I get back around to the beginning, I'm going to pull in a little bit and keep going until I get a nice little spiral center. And you can see that gives me a cute little ruffle circle that kind of spirals in. It looks a little floral-ish and it's just a sweet little way to finish a cake, right? And so you might have noticed as I get towards the end so I don't um, bump into the ruffles I've done before, I'm just going to pull the back end of the bag up a little bit. And that's going to give you that little bit of height on the next one. And it just gives you a cute little finish. So when I'm done, just transfer it over. I just want to make enough of these so that I can cover whatever surface on my cake I want to. So I'm going to go for the top. So I'm probably going to need a bunch to go around that outside edge maybe like eight to 10 and maybe like six to seven for the middle. So I probably wanna make somewhere between 18 and 20 flowers. And I just find it's great, make yourself extra, do as many as you think you need to. This is really great practice for getting used to your flower nail. And if you've never used it before, line that little part of the nail, the actual nail part right up there with that last joint on your fingers, place your thumb there and you're just pushing towards your fingertips. When you need to spin again, you want to retract, reset, and then you can push again. And this is great for getting used to controlling that rate at which you're twisting, retracting it, spinning it, right? It's a great way to get used to holding and using your flower nail without really having to focus too much on what we're doing on top because we're making these nice 
fun little organic ruffly flowers that you know they're just kind of like little fantasy flowers they're not really anything specific they're just kind of sweet and cute little details so i'm going to keep going until i have enough of these to cover the top of my cake So we've piped all of our flowers on our nail. They've chilled in the fridge, depending on your climate and humidity, other factors might take a little more, a little less time, but they're gonna need at least 15 to 20 minutes. Now I wanna apply them to my cake. So since they're hard, I'm gonna need to put just a little bit of buttercream down. You can use an offset spatula, your hands, or even a flower lifter, whatever you want and whatever is easiest to get them into place. So you just wanna go ahead and lift up and then just place them down on that buttercream. And you can see we get a beautiful little flower there and we can just keep going until we fill in this whole area. And just give yourself enough space in between each one to put those down. And I made some of mine a little smaller and some a little larger so that I would have some to fill up some kind of nooks and crannies as well. And this is a great way to practice using your bag, using your flower nail, just kind of work on those skills. And you can see it's really easy if all you've got is an offset spatula, you can use that as well. It's easy when they're firm to slip it right underneath and use that to place those little blossoms. And I made some cute tiny ruffles as well to kind of stick in those little nooks and crannies, get in there in those in-between spots. So you can practice making different sizes. With different amounts of layers, make them big, make them small. So you can really work in all those little spaces. And we're gonna quickly cover this whole top area just by working around and give ourselves a beautiful floral covered top. It's actually a really easy effect to accomplish, even if you're a beginner and you're just starting out and you're not used to piping or working with your flower nail yet. So you'll notice I just go, I place a few flowers and then I'll give myself a few little dots and it makes it easy then to kind of fill in and really pack them in in that surface area. And it doesn't matter if you want, you can go all the way around the outside edge and then fill in the center, or you can kind of work over like I'm doing, but you just wanna go and make sure that when you get to the end, you're leaving enough space for your blossoms and spacing them out so you get a nice look and it feels nice and full. Cause I can probably get two more in there of my large ones around the outside. So we've got this last little spot along the edge and we're gonna put this little guy right in there to fill that up. Just give it a press down. And then we're gonna keep filling in here. And we should have room for one more big one in the center. You can see this gives us a really great floral effect and just want to pick one really nice big one to pop there in the middle to finish this off. And it's really easy just to get those on there and make a really lovely, roughly flower inspired cake that's actually really easy to accomplish even if you're a beginner.
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.